Hi, everybody. I'm Christine Siobhan, and our show is Spiritual Exploration. We have been going through a awful time in the last year or so. Not only our country, but the entire world. Different countries have have come up with having all of this disease coming. Uh, it's spread all over the place. We've had very, very many people die in this country and all over the world. And uh, we would like to now try to look into what the future will bring. We're in 2021 now. It's March 2021 that we're doing this show. We'd like to know what to expect in the next year and beyond so that we know how to deal with things and we don't have to be so afraid. I have here with me Mary Silvanell. She's an astrologer. She has a show of her own here. What is your show called, Mary? Astrology, Angels, and More. Astrology, Angels, and More. And when are you on? Mm -hmm. On Sunday nights Sunday, at 9 o'clock. Sunday night, 9 o'clock, mm -hmm. on Fios and Spectrum channels. Yes. You know the channels? 79, 79 and 39. On Spectrum. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, set, and 30, 31. 30, I don't think we have 31. I think it's 35. 35. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> anyway, though, so uh, Mary's very, very um, uh, adept at all of these things. She knows all about angels. She knows all about astrology. She's just a very, very well-rounded person. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, my In whole meantime, life. In the meantime, she's also here. She's done a lot of research mm. on the subject to look at the stars and the planets and see what we can expect as a people, as a people of this country, as a people of this earth. So take it away, Mary. Talk to us about about what we are, what we're going, what we're looking at, what we're looking forward to now. Well, there's there's a lot. <laughs> there's okay. a lot going on. Well, we okay. So it. yeah, <laughs> we have a lot going on, and yeah. uh, that's why I've. Quite a few notes too. Good. So well, I told you, so don't hesitate to do that because it's, we want to cover as much as we right. Can. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, yeah. I mean, twenty twenty was one of the worst terrible. years ever. It, I, I, yeah, I would say yeah. really seriously. Describe twenty twenty one of the worst years ever. Yeah, and um, the reason that that happened as an astrologer, I look at that. And what it is, is that the planet Pluto, we had, we had a whole big stellium of planets in uh, Capricorn that affected the world. And um, we're in the, United, in the chart of the United States. It was actually conjunct the natal Pluto, which Christine hasn't happened in 248 years. Really? Yeah. Natal Pluto. Natal Pluto in the... Oh, Brian has the chart of the United States. Okay, Brian, okay. bring up the chart. Of the United States. And this is a current chart. Okay. So now, as you're looking at the chart of the United States, um, on my show and also on God's Way, Yatave, I had talked about the stellium, so... Um, you can see those shows also on YouTube. But in reference to um, the chart that you're looking at of the United States, that's the current chart for March the 19th, 2021. Which is today. Yes, at uh, 6 p.m. Now, what's going on there, the one long yellow line that I have there is in reference to Pluto. It looks like a banana. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. On the, the one that's more vertical. Yeah. Right. That is where, in the chart of the United States, because every country has an astrological chart. Of and the day that it was born, established. Born. born. Yeah. Well, July yes. 4th, 1776. Right. At is four, our birthday. Absolutely. At 4.37 p.m. That's when they signed the die, the... Uh, Declaration of Independence? In Philadelphia. Really? Yes, absolutely. So as an astrologer, that's what I look at when I'm looking for anything in reference to the United States of America, uh -huh. the condition. Now, that Pluto, okay, conjunct there, that has not happened in the chart of the United States in 248 years. So you go back 248 years, and what you're looking at is the revolution. Ah. Oh, Do you understand what yeah. I'm saying? 
the revolution. Uh-huh. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we had another one. Well, oh, I, Christine, I hope not. But what I wanted to say in reference to that is then the other yellow marks that I have on there, that is where all the planets have moved now. Prior to this, last year, when we were looking at this chart and we actually put it up on uh, the show, all these planets that are on the bottom there that have now moved away from Pluto, they were all right on top of Pluto. So that was the stellium, it was called, hmm. okay, of um, Capricorn. And this is what created the pandemic. Now, let clarify that. Okay. You could take it down now, Brian. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brian. Um, clarify that. Okay. Well, what happened was to have that many planets all conjunct together in that particular sign of Capricorn, that is the hardest place for it to possibly be, not just for the United States of America. I mean, that's all the planets. It was Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, you know, Venus. They, they were all lined up together in Capricorn. So it was like, it was just too much energy that hit the earth in a very negative way. Tell me something. What does that mean for a person whose sign is Capricorn? For instance, right. I that... am Cancer, but with Capricorn rising, which is equal to my sign. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean to me or anybody else that has Capricorn in their sign? Okay, that's a very good question. I'm so happy you asked it, yeah. because what I have found in my readings, especially too, anyone who is born with Capricorn rising, Capricorn sun sign, right. Cancer rising, oh boy. Cancer sun sign. So I got both, Cancer sun sign and Capricorn rising. That's what I'm saying. And, you know, I mean, it hasn't been the easiest year for you, oh, has no, it? No, it hasn't been the easiest year for anybody, really. No, right. absolutely. But it hasn't, yeah, it has not been a very easy, easy year. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I have to tell you, Cancers and Capricorns, it's been very difficult. But the thing is that it isn't just this past year, it really accumulated then, but even prior to that, because what was happening is, like, say, a Cancerian, as you, as you are, right mm -hmm. your sun sign yes all those capricorn planets were in opposition to your sun sign so one after another after another hit and in an opposition and that is uh, at oppositions are are very difficult oppositions and squares to deal with astrologically mm. and the reason that this hit the United States so poorly is because the sun sign of the United States of America is ca cancer, cancer, July the 4th. Right. Absolutely. Right. So what happened was, I mean, in the, in the United States of America, um, uh, if you, Brian, can you put that chart up once again, please, if you don't mind? Thanks a lot. If you look, on the opposite end of the of the chart, um, in opposition, up to the right hand corner in the inner circle, though that's where all the planets were when we uh, when the Declaration of Independence was signed. Right Those are all in Cancer. It's empty right now. Well, no, no, the inner circle, the one inside oh, of it. Inside. Yeah, okay. It. okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Right. Uh, when, with the United States of America, the sun, the part of fortune, Mercury, Jupiter, uh, Venus, all were in the sign of Cancer on July the 4th, 1776. So you can only imagine... <laughs> how all on. this, what happened here yeah, yeah. with this major opposition. Thanks, Brian. Thanks a lot again. So what ended up happening was uh, where it fell for the United States, because it fell differently, like in China, it fell differently, uh, all those planets, the stellium, but it was still a stellium up in the heavens, but where it fell in the birth charts of the other countries like Russia, you know, it fell in different areas. Um, but for the United States, it fell right in the house of money, finances, 
Yes. Meaning? Yes. Well, look at what has happened with the uh, lockdowns and everything financially. Look what has happened. A lot of businesses and have suffered. Yes, yes. And on top of that, um, look at the debt we are accumulating now as a country. And do you think that they had that debt accumulating has to do with the money that they're giving away to everybody? Well, I imagine that have contributes to it. Well, I, I well, if you're talking about like the stimulus and yeah, all that, yeah, yeah. well, that stimulus, I mean, is minor in comparison to what's to, to what all the rest of the. I mean, I didn't want to get into a political, no. um, <laughs> you know, but um, that particular bill you're talking about, you know, it's really uh, my understanding that it's a small percentage that um, is what they're actually showing out. Right, oh, right. It's okay. a small percentage really? that's going into the stimulus checks and oh, that kind okay. of thing. Yeah. But you know, they they had to do something, right? Well, yeah, I guess, and there are people that absolutely need it desperately. 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 It helps pay their bills, keeps the roof over their head, food on their Food table. in their mouth, right. Yes. You know? I mean, uh, absolutely, I agree 100%. But see, now, where this fell for uh, China, would you like to talk about that? Go ahead, talk about okay. It. Yeah, thank you. everything. And the audience would like to know what's going on in okay. the world, what's going on Well, here. I have good news, too. So, well, I mean, good. it isn't just, yeah, I have good news, too. I have real good news for this year. But last year was so tough, you know. Yes. I mean, we had six eclipses. Last year, six. Really? That's a lot. Now, this year, 2021, we uh -huh. only have four. Oh, is that all? Yeah, just four. And uh, I hate to bother you again, Brian, but could you put up the eclipses with the dates and then people could see? Yeah, Brian. Maybe they want to jot it down. Huh? Brian doesn't mind. Oh, thanks, Brian. You're, you're a sweetheart. He's a good kid. Okay, no, those are Mercury retrograde, but people could, uh, I'm sure they would appreciate January knowing that, day, too. Right. So we go to May, September, and October. Right, October. three times this year. Um, that's what we're dealing with um, as far as Mercury retrograde goes. But the eclipses, um, that's uh, other dates than that. Okay, so that's Mercury retrograde. What about the eclipses, Brian? There yeah, they are. There are. Okay, so we have four eclipses, and you can see them in each sign when uh, they're happening. And those eclipses, I have to tell you, are not equivalent to the four, to the six, excuse me, six eclipses that we had last year. That's what was the triggering effect. See, when we have an eclipse, it's a triggering effect to um, activate what's happening in the stars with the planets. And the eclipses that were happening in 2019 also, okay, even before 2020, those created, thank you, Brian, thank you, those created what happened then in March, actually January the 10th, okay, of uh, 2020 is really when the pandemic began. Yeah. January the tenth. No, yeah. that's 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 a fact. Okay. And um, that was that that was at the time of an eclipse. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like a triggering effect. So you have a whole lineup of planets, and then uh, what ends up happening is you get a, an eclipse, something like that happening, and it's like it's like lighting the fire. Well, tell you me know? now, these eclipses and um, retrogrades and all that stuff. Did they actually affect what actually came down when all this started? When when the pandemic started, did the planets have anything to do with which way it all went? Oh, absolutely. Yeah? Tell us. Well, absolutely. I mean, because it foretold that something was going to happen. Actually, you know, as an astrologer, and um, even on, on my show, the other astrologers that I've had on my show uh -huh. and um, on um, God's Way Yatave, another mm -hmm. show yes. on um, CTV, you know, I've talked about it many times and it's been over and over that we've talked about. It. I've been talking about this 
at least since 2016, mm -hmm. that this was coming up, you this conjunction. Something. Absolutely. I didn't know it was going to be the pandemic. Uh -huh. I knew something oh, knew major, something was, major was, was going to happen. Uh -huh. Yes. Actually, I've been watching uh, this mm, planetary aspect of Pluto, conjunct Pluto, for like 20 years Oh. You know, because I mean, you could see that it was coming. That's that's major. Oh, it's one that's years major. Ago, yes. Coming? Well, see, like in your chart, okay, yeah. or in my chart, or any human being's chart, yeah. Pluto conjunct Pluto only happens once every two hundred and forty-eight years. So it doesn't happen in everybody's lifetime. Uh -huh. So as an astrologer, when I'm doing someone's chart and I'm doing a reading for them. If I see Pluto coming to hit their Pluto, that's some major stuff, mm -hmm. you know. But um, it happened uh, for the other countries, too. So it isn't just the United States. Well, no, because people are people. They're all born. The planets are out they there. they stars around them when they're born. Right, exactly. Every single human being. Any country, even this, like this table, you could do uh, the day it was built. You could do an astrological chart oh, for it. Well, okay. And for a country, why not a table? Yeah, a building. I do it for people's businesses. What the day that they become incorporated? Yeah. You tell them how their businesses. Yeah, are that's I look at I look at those charts in order to see what what things are coming up and everything with wow. their businesses. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, do it with the stock market. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of astrologers that specialize only in the stock market. They yeah, must, they must, that's a specialty. They must do a lot of um, betting of you know, yeah. but uh, trading, must, trading, yeah, for themselves. yeah. They get, get themselves yeah. Uh, I wish I was a little bit more in tune with that myself. <laughs> I could be rich, <laughs> right. but see now, China, and if if Brian, if you could put up China, okay, if you don't mind, the chart of China. We have China. Very good. Thank you. Now, if you notice, we have the uh, Pluto conjunction for uh, China, but it's hitting their Jupiter. It's not hitting their natal Pluto. So when we have the planet Pluto transiting through the stars, moving along, and then it hits as a conjunction for the natal Pluto, that's not good. That's bad. That's huge, yeah, okay? Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. When it's traveling along and it hits Jupiter, that can mean you can get a windfall of money. Really? Right. And so if you look at the chart of China there and you look down in that left-hand corner again where the two yellow circles are, mm -hmm. one above the other, okay? Oh, one is on the, the inside and one is there. That is the conjunction of Pluto hitting Jupiter in the natal stars of China in the house of money. So as far as China goes, financially, yeah. they're doing very well. Oh, really? They can, yes, they can get a windfall. From where? From these stars. From the stars? Where, well, wherever it would come from physically, but, and I won't speculate on that. Okay. Yeah. I have my own, you know, ideas on that. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is this was actually beneficial, not the pandemic part of it for the people of China and the world, of course not. But what bothers me is the fact that Pluto hit their natal Jupiter in the house of money. When you see something like that in a human being's chart and a person's chart, that could mean that they hit the lottery. Mm. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so in other words, even, even hitting the lottery is in your chart. <laughs> and at the same time, at the very same time, in the stars of China, is Jupiter transiting through the house of money. So they have a double header Jupiter, and Jupiter is the luckiest planet of all. Jupiter is expansion, abundance, very good luck. 
Jupiter. Jupiter. So that's what China has. And how, and, and, but we don't hear. No, <laughs> it had the opposite effect on us. Oh, in other words, financially. financially. So in other words, China came through this whole pandemic thing. Financially. Financially better off than they were. Mm -hmm. And we came through it financially less Better than we were. we were. So my, yeah, so. Is that going to change? Anymore? As an astrologer, no. that bothers me. Yeah, okay. Well, sure. You know, that bothers me. Of course. We want to see our country prosper. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So then I wonder, well, how is it then, you know, that China's prospering? Yeah, how? Because I, it's my understanding also we have given a lot of money to China. Mm -hmm. Is that one of the reasons it's prospering, or the only reason, or what? I don't um, know whether that's the only reason, but, um, you know, I mean, now it's lucky for them that, uh, because, I mean, they're, they're now, you know, that there's a shift politically in the United States. Yeah. Um, now we're doing business with China again before we weren't. That's one thing. You know, so you could look at it that way. You think that's a good thing or what? Uh, I'm not sure. I yeah, really don't want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say. But like I said, you know, as being a United States, uh, being an American, it would have been luckier for us. Of course. You know? So it's like as though money is going out of the United States, but then I see, you know, China's get Wow. Okay. So, but the thing is, in reference to the United States, here's the good news, and here's the good news for everybody, for okay. the world, good. okay? Good. That big stellium that we had of all those planets in Capricorn, and this is the good news for you, too, because you're a Cancerian, mm -hmm. and you have all of them in opposition. For Capricorns and Cancerians, and Capricorn rising, Cancer rising, for the world, actually, okay? What's happening is it finally dispensed. Um, now the planets have finally moved. So instead of all being in Capricorn, now the planets... Uh, such as Saturn has moved into Aquarius, Jupiter has moved into Aquarius, which that was a very lucky time, too, that, that I'd like to say. But now Mercury's in Pisces, you know. I mean, the Sun and Venus uh, are in Pisces. So this is all good. It's moved away from that whole big conjunction. We needed that to disperse. It was too much energy. Out, yeah. Like right, right. Okay. And now things are starting to flow again. Yeah, okay. And it shows it, so you know? in other words, we were kind of like stagnant and stuck in 2020, and now we're getting unstuck? Unstuck. We're unstuck. Uh -huh. And, you know, what ended up happening on December 21st, 2020, Big, big thing happened. Aquarius, the age of Aquarius. That is the That's actual the day. That we day. actually entered the age of Aquarius. Right. Like the song said, but the song's been around a long time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, but it's true. Seriously, we've moved into the age of Aquarius. And what helped that happen was it was it's called the... Um, the uh, great conjunction of Saturn and uh, Jupiter together at zero degrees Aquarius. That happened right on 1220. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what we were we were leaving the age of Pisces? Yes. And going into the age of Aquarius? Yes. And that's going to cause a lot of change? Yes. And the age of Aquarius, my goodness gracious, I mean, that, that that's what we've all been waiting for. And, you know, to think about it, that we all decided that we wanted to be born now. Right, Christine? Well, yeah, we do decide that in the before time before we come here. But that's for any lifetime that we come here for. Yes. We decide in the pre-time before we actually descend to Earth in the form of a, a baby, I guess you might say, right? Yes. We're born as yes. a baby. Um, so, so we have we have um, uh, definitely uh, you know been been 
heading toward now now so what you're saying is that now that we're in 2021 and continuing forward from forward. all of this stuff that's yes. going on things are going to get better Yes. Now, things will be much better. Um, 2022, I mean, but this is something that I've been watching for a very long time. Twenty two, And this has nothing to do with politically when there's going to be elections or right. any of this kind of stuff. Right. Honestly, sure. um, it, 2022, things are going to lighten up. OK, then what's going to happen? 2024. But see, 2024, we could be out of all of this terribleness that we've gone through right. and moving in a really wonderful positive direction and what I find interesting is when you had brought up to me about Nostradamus and um, some of the uh, interesting things that I was reading is that he has always he he said that the year 2024 is critical for what's going to happen with the earth, the United States, us, like, the country, Europe, you know, the whole world. Is he, 2024 is critical. He's not predicting war, is he? No, well, you know, I mean, Nostradamus, um, you can interpret things different ways. People, in, you know, because yeah. it's, it's kind of the way he, he would— He kind of speaks in riddles. Yeah, he had to do that yeah. because he was afraid of persecution. Yeah, that. How do you know this? Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. You must but, be a witch or something. but yeah, but yeah, <laughs> but from um, I mean, some of the things that he he had predicted, at least that have been interpreted as that he predicted, were um, I mean Hitler. Uh, yeah, 9-11. almost got the name right, too. Yeah, yeah, Hisler, Hisler. didn't he say? Hisler, Hisler, that's right. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And 9-11, he uh, the twins predicted. Will fall. Yeah, see? See, you know more about it than I do. I don't know why. Yeah, <laughs> but you do. And But, yeah, but one of the things that he said, because he has also had in his quadrants that some people interpret that there could be a war, uh, the Third World War, that could last 26 to 27 years. That's terrible, you know? Oh, that, but God, who can I live through that? But he, has, he, but he always said that these things— you can change. So that's true. From well, yeah. even if you have like a a, a a a card reading or something with a psychic, and you don't like what you hear that, that to expect, you can do something to make that not happen that way. And that's why sometimes it's good to know something so that if there's something you need to change, you can. But unfortunately, sometimes what happens, and you know that, yeah. so you know how to change your mind in reference to that yeah. and push it in another direction. Unfortunately, sometimes people hear something negative in a reading. And they take it as if it's etched in stone. And then they create it with their minds. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's what they said is going to happen. That must be it. And they create it, you yeah. know, because our thoughts actually can create reality. Yeah, sure. So, um, but um, in, in reference to Nostradamus, he said 2024 was critical. And to me, that's very important because, and I didn't realize that until when you were talking to me about Nostradamus, and I, I and actually I read that. I a story where in the story they were trying to say that, that he was predicting World War III. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I don't feel that that, I, I don't see that. OK, yeah. I'm going I mean, to tell yeah, you that. I mean, I'm sure he wasn't 100 percent. And 2024, from what I have watched uh, for, for 20 years now, what I have watched is that 2024 is really when things will turn around. We need to turn get for through the better? the better. We need to get through to 2022, and I am not talking about this politically. I'm just telling you astrologically what I say. It'll lighten up, and then 2024 is when then oh, we could take relief. a sigh of relief. Yeah, really, seriously, from what from the effects of what we have just endured, mm -hmm. not just for 2020. Let's face it. Let's go back. We can go back several years where there was a buildup 
for all of this, you know, if, yeah. you, if you really look at it. But astrologically, that's what I have always seen is uh, 2024. And um, but especially now we're in the age of Aquarius. That's what we were talking about before. Right. And I, I just want to talk a little bit more about that because we waited 2000 years for this. Yeah. And we were probably around back then, too. <laughs> of course we were. I'm sure oh, I knew you then. I'm sure, too. Yeah. Well, no, for say, sure. They say that that who you are, are associated with in a, in, a, in a particular lifetime are people that you hang out with, not only but that you hang out with lifetime after lifetime the same people or in different forms sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 also you the people that you have in the before time decided you're going to be my mother, you're going to be my father, we're going to be sisters, we're going to be brothers, whatever. You know what I mean? You know who's going to be who. Absolutely. Including people that are not going to be good in your life, that you're going to have to, in your life, mm -hmm. decide, okay, that one's got to go. You know what I mean? Because they're not there for my highest good. And these are just things that you have to experience that you know about before you get here. Oh, absolutely. And this is how we evolve. That's this right. This is all the ascension process. Mm -hmm. That's how we evolve, and that's what, what it's all about. That's why we keep coming back. Right. Yeah, but we yeah we come back in the same soul groups. That's right. Yes. So we can learn those lessons until we learn the lessons. And that's why lots of times people, you know, they're in a bad relationship maybe, yeah. and they can't seem to get out of it. Mm -hmm. It's because this has been the, the whole scenario from lifetime to, to lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. The same lifetime. person in the same, the same yeah. problems. And until they solve them, they got to keep doing it over and over yeah, again. Yeah, exactly. Keep going around the same mountain until you get it right. Well, I do past life regression, as you know. Yes. And um, what I find is one of the really wonderful things about past life regression is when you view that lifetime, you balance the karma that came along with that. So instead of having to go through the whole process of all the pain that you endure, you know, and maybe it's a bad relationship and you can't understand why you can't get out of it, or maybe have a phobia or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And then once you see that lifetime and where the origin of that karma came from, it's balanced. It's completely balanced. Yeah. Yep. I got all, all got figured out. Yeah, because you recognized it, and then it's done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's absolutely amazing. But um, the age of Aquarius is bringing us into, uh, and that was uh, triggered by the great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter and Aquarius, zero degrees Aquarius. And um, so anyway, but they create, Saturn and Jupiter and Aquarius create an energetic balance and this is this is really really beautiful because Jupiter brings the light the lightness and joy to Saturn's sternness. You know, Saturn is like the taskmaker, the restrictor. Yeah, uh, but Jupiter is the one that's so lucky and whimsical and all of that. Likes to party, huh? Right. But the <laughs> age of a yeah likes to party. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can I just, tell that you? just came out. I don't know where it came from. Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. <laughs> yeah. And every Sagittarius I know is a lot of fun. <laughs> I got to tell you. Including I got to tell yourself. you. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm not a Sag. You're not a Sag? Oh, no. that's right. I'm not you a Sag. Are, when April, no, May, May, May 10th. Shh. <laughs> You're telling on me. I don't know, okay, I get all yeah. <laughs> okay, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah, well, I'm a so Taurus. We know your birthday I am is. a Taurus. Yes, Taurus. I am. And yes, you know, I am. And Taurus and Cancer get along very well. Very well. Yeah, I know. Well, yes. okay, I'm going to say this. I probably shouldn't. I don't usually share about my chart on television. Right. But my moon is in Cancer, and that's why you and I have always gotten along so well. And plus the Taurus, you know. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Too. From day one. Yeah, right. Yeah. Day one. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, um, but anyway, so the thing is that for the age of Aquarius, you know, uh, technical innovation is coming, you know, and sometimes I wonder if that's as good as, uh, you know, what do you think about that as far as all this technology? I find it's hard to keep up with, to tell you the truth, because I grew up in a time when there wasn't hardly any technology you know, I grew up, all right, we had cars. Yeah. We just about had television when I was a little girl. 
I came in around that time, okay, and I remember my parents getting the first black and white, I think it was a Magnavox or something like that, and uh, and and watching television, yeah, and it did. But to say the thing is, though, it was all new, and 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 as I grew, more things came about, and they invented this, and they invented that, and then a computer came along. We had no idea about computers. We had no idea about cell phones. No, something that we didn't know anything about, but lived just fine without them. Yeah, but, but I... once you got it, you can't give it up. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Once it came about, You're right. you had to say, okay, You're right. I got it. I got a phone now. I got a TV. I got this. I got that. And all the technology. Some of it, 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 it can be a blessing and a curse. Exactly. Exactly. Um, my concern is that uh, computers are really getting smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter. I know. Well, you, you know, know what I'm talking about? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Even as a child, even as a child, um, I, I remember hearing things like machines are going to replace people. Mm. It's machines funny. are going to do all the work and people aren't going to be able to work. And, all. and this is as a child. I remember being a child. You know the little bar things on, on, on you, buy, you buy a can of soup and they, 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 they pass it over the skinner. The scanner, scanner, yeah. Scanner, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, they, and, and it comes up with the price. Yeah. All right, I grew up when the girls used to punch it all in. Oh, this is 29 cents, 29 yeah. cents. Okay. You know yeah. what I mean? Yes, I do very um, well. <laughs> yes. Anyway, though, but they they had those little those little bars on them back then before they even invented the machine to read them. I think you're right. I remember Because nobody the bars knew what the bars them. were for. That's right. And I was, you are right, Christine. I never thought about it. You know, I was there. having a conversation uh, with a friend of mine this morning, just this morning, about about this kind of thing, yeah. about that machines are getting too far ahead, technology is getting too... But in the age of Aquarius, I mean, that's what it's about. But I have to tell you, I mean, the good part about the age of Aquarius is the humanitarian part of things, that we really need to see us take care of each other and love each other. Of course. Well, that's be... what God put us here for. Absolutely. A lot of people don't realize that. They think that we're here to just be selfish and just do for me, 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 me. And it's not, I know. And that's not what God wants. Now, and I, I, in some ways, it's like it went one way or another, I feel, like during the pandemic, that it either went that people, you know, got more loving to others and really started appreciating yeah. others, or they got very bitter. Both sides, yes. It depends on the person. Yeah. Because I know when I'm like in a grocery store or something, I'll talk to people. Yeah. All right. I'll make a comment, like like you know, or, and or tell us even tell a story sometimes because you gotta be there and friendly with other people. Oh yeah. You gotta show people that we're all members of the human race and we're here to be there for each other. We have to love each other. And we have to love each other. That's the truth. And we have to be kind to each other. Today I was on a, a, a drive up line, um, and there was uh, somebody that drove up, and the line was taking a little bit long. And this guy's actually in the back of the line, beeping the horn, yelling out the window, come on, let's smell it. You know? Oh. And I'm looking, I'm going, holy God, this guy's got, you know, one time, you know, <laughs> everything changed. Now, yeah. my cousin's daughter got married in August. The, the wedding was supposed to happen in March. Just before they were going to have their wedding and reception, everything closed down. No, and the, the, the catering hall had to give them back their money. Oh, the is that place. terrible? So they just did a little wedding, and I went and saw them outside the the place where they were getting right. married. You know, and I was outside for 15, 20 minutes. That's all we could do. Right. There was no reception. There was no right. food. There was no drink. There was no, not even a glass of water. You just went and you saw the bride and groom, good luck, and you left. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, though, I accidentally blocked somebody's driveway, and the guy's out there, and he's beeping the horn, and he's really, really going crazy. Yeah, same. So I went, I said to them, I said, I think I got to go. Take care. Good luck. Bye. And I went. And the guy's standing there, sitting there. I turned around to him because his window's open, and he's yelling. And I turned, I said, look, mister, this is the only way we can do things nowadays. Can't you just be a little bit patient? You know, his face went down, the window went up, and he just went like this. 
okay, because he was embarrassed that he was making a, a scene, causing people to be disturbed because he couldn't That's get right. in his driveway. That's right. You know? So I'm glad I told him. I'm glad you did, too. Uh, well, I'm, I'm outspoken. I'll tell you what I'm thinking, you know? Uh -huh. Very I mean, direct. I do have a filter, but... <laughs> okay. But I will. I will try to get a point across if I really. Yeah. Feel well, very that wasn't necessary. It. What was that wasn't necessary. Happening. No. Okay. So, um, but anyway, the thing that I wanted to say in reference to this uh, Saturn and Jupiter conjunction is, uh, as far as the age of Aquarius goes, it's going to be more humanitarian, and people are going to start treating, it's going to lighten up. Now, understand that even though it started uh, December 21st, 2020, this lasts for 2,000 years, this age of Aquarius. And so right, we're yeah. only in the beginning of That's it. right. We're, we're at the end of Pisces and the beginning of Aquarius. We're done with Pisces. Yeah. that's our, We're done with right. it. That was the day. And that was 2,000 years, and that's when Jesus was around with absolutely, Pisces. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jesus came at the beginning of the age of Pisces. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But... Um, you know, uh, the the thing is, though, we have very unpredictable Uranus that's coming up in February, June, and December, uh, making some squares to Saturn. So we might see sudden changes in reference to the structure of governments and even some sudden things that can happen, changes that can happen, the structure of our lives, of what we do as individuals. So I'm talking about how it's affecting us as individuals. So um, we might start seeing governments throughout the world shifting a bit and changing a bit, things like that. So this you is not like just the United from States. from the socialist and communist uh, ideas? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I certainly hope I so. I hope so. Is I right, hope because, so. You know, I, mean, I don't understand people thinking that way, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Um, so anyway, but a big, big factor here is 2021 is the year to really start over. Seriously. Okay. okay. To start over, because we're going to have very nice opportunities. You know, this month alone in March, um, I, we didn't have one retrograde all month. Did you know that? No, well, not last month, one we planet. did have Mercury recently, though, right? Yeah, well, that was That's before. Gone. That was it's February. Gone. It yeah. ended. But the end of February, that ended. But what I'm talking about is, like, the whole month of March, not to have— We have some very nice stars right now to soften things and bring things about in a more positive way. And in May, Jupiter will be moving into um, dreamy, artsy, romantic Pisces, okay? Remember, Jupiter is the luckiest planet of all, right, right? Right. And people wait for Jupiter to go into, like, their house of love when oh, I'm really? doing readings for them. That only happens once every 12 years. So Jupiter brings about um, some, some really beautiful things, and especially anyone who is— in any kind of the in the art world, any kind of create creativity, even uh, music, art, the spiritual world, uh, spiritual uh, advisors, and things like that, and the mental health. Um, Jupiter is going to bring a lot of really good success for people who do those things. Yes. So, in mm -hmm. other words, like people who are going into like new careers and stuff like that. Yeah, really good. Now, this is May. In May, you're going to see, you know, you already hear on the news how um, travel is really starting to open up. You yeah. know what I mean? You hear yeah. that, right? right? Well, May, wait for May, because then you're really going to hear it. For the travel industry, May is going to be the beginning of uh, a really beautiful new rebirth. And um, in reference to love, 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 love in May. Okay, so those are some Still of the things everybody? that I'm— Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, love is when it can happen. Uh, May is when it can happen, when love is with, with Jupiter 
um, is shining down and the aspects that it's making, it can bring a lot of love and joy to our world. Ah. Okay, so love can happen romantically. Love can be loving yourself. Love can be loving one another. You're going to see more of a... You know, like a, more of a peaceful, gentle... A lot of love going out yeah. toward other people, even toward animals, maybe. Yeah, animals, absolutely. Um, it's going to be more humanitarian. Oh, good. That's my point. That's ah. my point. Now, I know you really wanted to cover things in reference to the world. I have something here on uh, Russia, too, if you want. Go ahead. If Tell you want to talk, to it, uh, talk what about it, it's up about. to you. That's what's going on in, it's up in to the you. country and the world. Okay. As you can see, I have a lot of charts here. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Okay, here it is, Russia. Do you have that chart, Brian, if you don't mind? Russia. Oh, boy, he was ready. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, what you're looking at with Russia, see the yellow marks that I made mm. on the chart? Yes. All the way on the left side of the chart, what I have circled there is the rising sign of Russia, which they are a Taurus rising. And Uranus, the planet Uranus, is conjunct their rising sign, and I'll explain that in a moment. In opposition to that, if you look all the way over to the right side, what's circled there is um, Russia's birth chart has the planet Jupiter in Scorpio. Okay, so now what's happening is something's going to be, you could take it down now, Brian, thank you. Something's going to be, there's going to be big changes in reference to Russia. Really? When the planet Uranus, which only happens once every 84 years, okay, goes over a rising sign, it brings tremendous changes. Hmm. Now... The rising sign is Taurus, and Taurus is money, land, you know, it's all that. It's wealth. And recently, there's been a lot of talk in reference to Russia, whereas prior, we didn't hear very much about Russia, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you realize that recently there's there's been an incident of, um, you know, a little banter back and forth between the president of our country and theirs, okay? Yeah. Back and forth a little bit. So... Um, They're not getting along or what? Yeah, like a <laughs> little bit of something talking here and there, <laughs> back and forth, okay? And um, what I'm looking at is, though, that just keep an eye that you're going to see, especially within the next four, four years, three years, I'd say, um, you're going to see some changes that will be uh, occurring in, in Russia, now, okay, some what, big changes. Changes like what? Like, I mean, are they going to be, are we going to be more uh, closer to them or further I'm apart? going to tell you something that eventually what I, what I feel is that um, eventually we're going to be uh, very good friends with Russia. It's oh, going right. to take time. Well, nice I don't see it happening right away. Oh, please, can't other. we all get along? That's right. But <laughs> the thing is, I, I got to tell you, and you know, I'm. Uh, it, what concerns me here is that um, I feel that. Look, I had said it. Um, I had I had said this before already on on television that um, I had felt this was even before the pandemic. China is much more of a problem and a threat to the United States and to the world than Russia. Uh, Russia. Right. Mm, okay. Right. Yeah, the government of. So um, that's... You know what I feel bad about, though? A lot of people are blaming the Chinese for this pandemic. Oh, that's horrible. And it's horrible. And, and just the other day, so that's they horrible. six Chinese people. What's what's going on? You can't you can't just that's randomly horrible. pick people because they're a certain nationality. That, well, that's stupid. It really is. Well, can I tell you something? 
I mean, I'm like, uh, uh, because I have, uh, I have quite a few Oriental friends, and you know, I mean, they're absolutely, they're absolutely wonderful people. I'm sure they are. And they are not, you know, they they're they're all for their, their they love the United States. And they, you know, they can't well, there's a help. lot of people that have come here from other countries who absolutely love this country. Well, what I'm what I'm saying is, though, I know a lot of Oriental people, okay, and um, they really appreciate being here in this country, and they have left their countries because they they couldn't survive yeah. properly yeah. so they they love this country yeah. they they aren't you know they are not the enemy right. at all I know, you know I that's know. not what we're talking Anybody, about here we're talking there's, about there's we're talking about of, countries we're not talking people. about people there's a lot of ignorant people not out there. people yeah. we're talking about countries right okay but i'm talking about like financially for the united states um, that I, when I say that uh, I feel that China financially is a bigger threat to the United States than any other country. Mm. And that's just, you know, it's it's, that's where it is. Right. Yeah, you're probably right. That's cool. where, where it's at, yeah. you know. Yeah. But what I'm uh, looking at is I really, my, my prayer is that it, that, you know, that I'm correct about this. After 2024, that we're going to be in so much better shape. We really are. We really are. We will have already come through this. You know, uh, the last pandemic that we had was the Spanish flu right. in uh, around 18, um, 19, 19, 18, yeah. 19, 20, 20. And like we that. had the 20, then we had the roaring that 20s. Was, yeah. Weren't we talking about that, you and me? Was yes, I talking on the about telephone that? the other day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, then we had the roaring 20s. Yes. So maybe we'll have the roaring 20s again. Well, let's hope that it doesn't uh, get followed by a by a depression either. Oh no, we don't want that, no. do we? No, do we? No. I have to tell you, I mean, that's what concerned me in reference to Pluto, that I, I was talking about earlier in the chart of the United States, that it's in the second house of money. And that's what had concerned me. I'm so grateful that all these other planets have dispersed and they're moving away from that kind of a situation. Mm. Um, the only problem is the amount of debt that we're incurring now, you know, because of this whole yeah. pandemic yeah, yeah. situation. Sure. You know? Well, I'm hoping that we can find our way out of it at some point. We will. That's why yeah. I feel 2024. Yeah. I'm telling you. When we get rid of the present regime, if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, well, I... Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> I don't mind saying because let's face it, what it, it is, what it is. It is what it is, Christine. Yeah, that's it. It is what it is. Yeah, absolutely. You're you're right on. Mm -hmm. So there you go. But um, I hope that. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to May. Well, it's my birthday in May anyway. I know, but I mean, I I'm looking forward to May because I feel that, you know, between that, which is only like another six weeks away that right. we're into May, yeah, yeah. you're going to see a whole big shift of energy that's going on. This equinox is really very, very good that's happening tomorrow because then that continues for the year. That's why I wanted to talk about the equinox because that energy, even though it's happening tomorrow and maybe people won't see this show well, until— What is an equinox and what does it do? Total balance. The the sun and the moon are in com uh, total opposition. And what it is, I had made a lot of notes here in reference to it. Um, it's actually at 5.37 a.m. tomorrow morning, Eastern Standard Time, March 20th. And this is the time when daytime and nighttime are equal all over the world. Really? Yes, daytime and nighttime are equal. Exactly. It's 12 total hours balance. Each. Total balance. You yes. Must feel exactly yes. 12 hours. Yes. And it's all it also represents an equal balance between the sun and the moon, the masculine and the feminine. And you know, at the same time, um, we shift 
from Pisces, the sun shifts from Pisces into the sign of Aries. Actually, tomorrow is the new year for the, the astrological chart. OK, March for the heavens starts the astrological chart, because what starts the astrological chart is when the sun moves into Aries ah. at zero degrees. And that's tomorrow morning at uh, 537 a.m. But the whole thing is that what what it also represents is where everything dies and you let go of it. When I say everything dies, you know the old the old and dies off, the and you're bringing in the new. Well, and what? No, go ahead. Oh, it's a really good time. I just wanted to mention it would be a nice time, um, and even through uh, throughout this this Aries period of time, to uh, so that's for a whole month to burn some incense of rosemary, which heals and opens your heart chakra, and also some basil, which will bring fortune and success. Okay, okay so there you have it. Yeah, now you know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. This has been very, very interesting. Oh, yeah, you know, thank and you. I, I hope that our audience learned something and uh, is looking forward to. Getting out of this whole situation that we're still in, but it's we're coming out of it, and we'll be okay. Thank you so much, Christine. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. having me.